Hello, everyone. May I start? Yeah. So thanks a lot for joining us uh, after the, the lunch uh, for this presentation about um, auto jazz or getting the most of auto jazz in 2022. Um, let's start by talking a little bit about the agenda. Um, as you can see, this presentation was submitted for the SUSE Digital uh, Conference. But I must say that it's not exactly the same version. From, from the beginning, I was not sure about how to organize this presentation. I wrote like, I don't know, 50 slides or something like that. But it was uh, quite boring and, uh, of course, quite long. So I have decided to, to, to reorganize the content that I want to, to explain. I don't I'm going to promise you that it will be fun, but it was, uh, at least it will be definitely shorter. So we are going to start talking about what AutoJazz is. I guess that all of you know what AutoJazz is. Otherwise, I wouldn't expect you to be here. Um, it will be a, a, a quick introduction. Then we are going to talk about the modernizing AutoJazz alternative initiative. Sorry. Um, and after that, I would like to focus on two different uh, aspects of the modernizing AutoJazz initiative that are dynamic profiles and then profile generation and validation, that it's something that we identified as one of the main pain points in AutoJazz. So with me, I'm Imovat Gonzalez. I work in the system management department. I'm part of the Jazz team, and uh, I have been working on Jazz and AutoJazz since uh, 2015, if I recall correctly. So let's start talking about what AutoJazz is. Basically, AutoJazz is a tool that allows you to perform an unattended installation or upgrade of uh, SUSE um, OpenSUSE systems. And it's also able to configure a system that is already installed, but just a, a limited set of aspects, those aspects that just knows about only. Um, it takes care of doing the partitioning, configuring the network, installing the bootloader, and all that stuff. Um, as an input, um, AutoJazz receives what we call a profile, which is basically an XML-based description of how the system should look like at the end. This is the typical minimal profile that I like to, to, to show. Basically, you have a section that describes the users. In this case, we are only setting the root password. And below, you have the software section that uh, tells AutoJazz which product it should install. The relevant thing about this slide is what is not in the slide. We are not saying anything about partitioning schema. We are not saying anything about bootloader. And that information is missing from the profile. The good part of AutoJazz is it's part of Jazz. So it will rely on just to figure out how to partition the disk, how to set up the network, how to install the bootloader, and so on. So you only need to specify those things that are relevant to you. Okay? But we should admit that Jazz and AutoJazz are somehow showing its age, although many people like and love Jazz and, and use AutoJazz. Uh, it's Time, time flies, and it needs some, some renovation. Our team, and the Jazz team, is kind of specialized in doing that. We basically uh, rebuild all the storage stuff for lib15.0. We make something similar to the networking code. It's not everything new, but uh, the core is different now. We make pretty much the same for users modules, software management. So during these years, we have been uh, working a lot on refactoring and cleaning up uh, all the stuff because we think it's important to be able to, to keep the project alive and kicking. So in AutoJazz, we decided that we wanted to introduce a few improvements, especially when it comes to create and validate profiles because it was, well, um, it was not uh, the best experience. We will take a look into that later. We wanted to add another mechanism to have dynamic profiles because the mechanisms we, we have to, to have profiles that can be adapted at runtime are rather uh, old, um, well, and old-fashioned. Not old, but old-fashioned. We wanted to get rid of the second stage. If you tried just a few years ago, the installation happened in two different phases. 
during the first stage, the most important stuff was uh, performed in partitioning, software installation, and so on. And after the first reboot, you, uh, you got into the second stage. And uh, at that point, you can configure additional stuff. In just that, the, the, that distinction does not exist anymore, so everything happens in the first stage. But uh, Autojazz keeps the second stage. And we wanted to get rid of that. Spoiler, it didn't work. So we will explain what we did later. And also, we wanted to have better error reporting. That's something we started to do when we rewrote the storage stack, because we started to have better errors and group errors in just one screen and so on. So that's something that we wanted to do. And these were the goals. Of course, the results were kind of different. Basically, we improved validation and, and profile generation. That's right. We added another mechanism to, to write uh, dynamic profiles using ERB, which is basically including Ruby code in the profiles. If you have programmed on PHP, or if you have used Jinja in Python, or if, if you have used uh, Rails, you must probably have worked with ERB. Uh, we made the second stage shorter, so for most cases, it's not needed at all. Even for installing micro OS and that kind of systems that just is not available in the installed system, well, we had to move some stuff from the second to the first stage, so you can do a full installation without missing anything, I would say. And we work also in some UI changes because I don't know if you know that uh, we have a tool to create the, the profile by clicking. Um, well, um, especially the partitioning section was not was not working. And we just uh, rewrite from scratch and, and make it more easier to use. So I would say that there were that those were the outcome of this modernizing Autojazz initiative. But I would like to focus on two different aspects of this uh, effort within the team. So the first of them is basically dynamic profiles. The point with dynamic profiles is that we already had some mechanisms for, for them. Yes. We have, um, the idea is that you can use a single profile to install many machines, but th that profile can be adapted at runtime. For instance, you can use the same profile, but maybe if your system has a second disk, you want to do something with that. And if you, it contains uh, different hardware, you might want to adapt the, the profile at runtime. Um, you, you name the use case. There are many use cases for having a limited set of profiles to install many machines. So uh, Autojazz already had mechanisms for that. But uh, well, I would say the one of them was pre-installation scripts. Basically, you write a script that changes the profile on the fly, and Autojazz rereads the same profile. It's kind of error prone, but uh, our customers use it uh, a lot. We have the rules uh, mechanism, which is basically the idea is to merge several XML documents. Uh, who of you like to work with XML? Well, okay. <laughs> uh, basically, uh, using uh, many merging many XML documents to find bring the final build the the profile, and we introduce ERB, which is kind of new approach and more akin to. Uh, 2021, okay? Uh, let's have a look to the old mechanisms and let's have a look then to the new one and, and let's try to compare them a little bit. First of all, that uh, the, as I said, the pre-installation script is basically a script that you run against your profile and modify the profile and ask how to just to reload it, something like this. Basically, this is the, the script. Uh, it, um, there is a placeholder there, netdev, so we find the, the, the uh, interface name and we do the replace and uh, move the profile to a new modified XML profile. And then uh, Autojazz will reload that profile. It's, uh, I would say it's error prone, um, but for uh, small changes it's quite convenient. The opposite is basically the rule system, which is powerful, it's a rather old mechanism, but it's not going to be deprecated. And I want to make this clear because some customers approach to us to ask, 
Should we move from rules and classes to ERB? No, if you don't, if you don't need, it's, it's perfectly fine to keep using rules. So if you use rules, keep using them. We are going to, to maintain and, and evolve them if needed. Basically, you define a set of rules that depends on your hardware, network configuration, and so on. And you can select different profiles for installation, or you can merge different profiles. So the dumbest, or the, the easy case, for instance, this is a rules definition file with lot of, of um, 12 elements. Depending on the network where you are installing the system, you are going to use a different profile. That one is rather easy, it's basically bringing a, a whole profile. But you might be interested in, for instance, if you have uh, many systems and some of them has a second disk, you might be interested in using the second disk for data or whatever. So we can do something like this. This is a minimal profile. Well, the partition section is the only interesting part. Uh, use your imagination to, to fill the system partition and system line partitions and so on. This is the base profile, the original one. We can write a rule like this. Is basically, if you have a second disk greater than 20 gigs, then merge the data drive XML, and that data drive can look like this, for instance. So AutoJS will be able to merge uh, all both uh, XML, so we'll, you will end up having two drive sections like this for the first and for the second disk. That's the idea of rules and classes. Of course, you could, if you wanted to, you could um, merge both drives into just one drive section and so on. There are some additional features, but basically that's the, the idea behind that. So you have many XML files and you merge them by setting a set of rules. So uh, we decided to introduce a different way because uh, uh, working with the PHP, ERB, and in other systems, Jinja in Python or whatever, it looked like uh, having some kind of support for ERB might be nice. Either ERB, we use ERB because Jazz is written in Ruby, so you have access to Jazz libraries from, from the profile. It's not exactly like that, but. And we have defined a set of what we call helpers, which is information that you can grab from the system. You can ask the system about if you're using EFI, about the, the disks, about the OS release, hardware information, and so on. So this is another stupid example, but let's say that you have two disks and you would like to use the bigger for the data, the smaller for, for the system. Uh, the line, sys this equals whatever is, is Ruby code, basically. We are selecting the disk with the minimal size. I think it's pretty readable, but I'm used to Ruby, so. And uh, once you get that disk, you are going to include that information at the device name in the device uh, element. And below is the opposite, the, the bigger disk, and you can include that information in the, in the device element. So you will have div is db, div is dc, or whatever. So you can interpolate uh, the information you got from Ruby within the profile. But you have control uh, structures too, so you can conditionally render part of the profile. For instance, you can just include an EFI partition if you are using, EF, uh, using EFI. Yes, or yes, will do that by themselves, but maybe you want to, to change some attributes or the size or whatever, and you can use the same profile for system using EFI and system not using EFI. So you can conditionally render part of the profile. And you can merge both of them, of course. I'm going to uh, configure the um, network card that is connected. Otherwise, I'm just going to ignore the configuration. Uh, and if I find some card with link, I'm going to, to define an interface section. If I do not find any interface, any, sorry, any link which is connected, I'm just going to split that part, uh, skip that part. Okay, so. And you can also uh, merge or combine ERB and pre-scripts. You cannot combine ERB and rules, but uh, scripts and pre-scripts and ERB, sure, you can uh, include the, the first MAC address in, in the script, for instance, in that way. 
okay? I guess if you are using a script, maybe you are doing it in a different way, but it's possible to do that, right? So what are the plans about ERB? Well, we would like to add more helpers, especially related to uh, URL handling, because it, trust me, it's important about getting, including more files uh, apart in from in the, into the profile, uh, having some kind of include helper or whatever. That's something that you can actually do, but it's kind of, of uh, strange. We would like to make easier to work with the snippets, and we would like to to make possible for you to include your own helpers. Again, it's something that you can do, but you know to to know the, the just internals and so on. So we are not at that point yet. And of course, we would like to know more use cases that you can think of. Maybe you see this slide and well, it's that not useful for me, or maybe it may solve some problems that you are having with AutoJazz. I don't know, and I would like to know. We we ask. We talk to some customers and users, but we would like to have more information from you, and the Open Source Conference is, uh, in my opinion, a good place to ask for that info, okay? And the second part I would like to, to talk is uh, validation and, and profile generation, because, m well, all, all of our users know how to generate a profile, but m most probably many people are not using the features to generate, to validate the profile, especially if the profile is well formed or not, if an element is valid or not. Uh, so I would like to, to go through, through the current or the pre-15.3 uh, validation uh, options and we, what we have introduced in this uh, new version. Your new version, I'm talking always about 15.3, you know, the pandemics and so on. So basically we have three different ways or we can combine them to generate a profile. The typical one is to write the profile from scratch. Well, that's not true. You, you usually have many profiles and copy and paste from, from them. Uh, another one might be to, to just clone the system. We call cloning the system to generate a profile from the system you are running. And it basically uh, creates a profile with the configuration of your running system. And, and the third option, to be honest, I do not know of anything that use that, which is basically auto just UI. Uh, for some cases, it might be pretty convenient, but I would say that checking auto just documentation and, and playing around with with cloning should be should be enough. But if you use it, please let me know, because you'll be the first person I know that uses it. So to generate a profile, that's something that already existed. Basically, for instance, you can clone the system by just calling just clone system, and you tell AutoJazz where to write the profile, and that's it. But it may happen that you are only interested in one part of the system, the bootloader, the storage, or partitioning, sorry, or the software configuration. Well, you can specify which part of the, of the system you are interested in. The truth is that if you do not specify one or several parts of the system, you are going to have a huge profile. We are talking about 2,000 lines of profile with a lot of information that might be not relevant because a good part of that information are just uh, defaults or, well, or information that is not that useful. Let's talk about that in, in a minute. We introduce uh, the compact mode, so you can generate the profile and AutoJazz will do its best to uh, reduce the profile size, which is basically not exporting system users and groups because they are created by packages and so on. So there's no point in creating and writing it again. Uh, if you have firewall D and you don't have not modified the songs, we are using the defaults and they are defined in the package, so we are not going to export them. Um, if you have not changed service, system D services presets, uh, we are not going to export those services. Is enabled by default. There is no point in exporting the service as enabled. Um, uh, well, let's be honest. Printer settings in AutoJazz are kind of a joke because basically we got the CAPS configuration and embed the configuration into the into the profile. So it's not that useful. So if CAPS is disabled, we are just going to ignore that. 
I, I did quite some examples, and one of them was I went from 2,000 lines of XML code to <laughs> just 800, which is, well, uh, quite a, a reduction. It may happen that you want those, that information to be present in the profile. You just clone the profile as always, but if you are interested, you can use the, the compact mode. And the last part is basically about validation. In Atoyas, until 15.3, was we just only one way to validate the profile, which is using an XML schema. It was pretty convenient, but I would say that many of our users didn't know about that. Uh, and it basically just it, it uh, checks that the, it's a well-formed document, and all the elements and that stuff that is included there are known to Autojazz. So we decided to throw the validator on you, and when you start installing with Autojazz, it will validate, as a first step, it will validate the profile. And it was interesting, we found out mm, two kinds of problem. Uh, one kind of problem is that the, our is, is, uh, XML schema was simply wrong because sometimes we added some options and we forgot to update the schema. And uh, the other kind of problem was, well, users that have been using some kind of uh, profile for quite some time and uh, it worked in the past or it seems to work in the past, but now it didn't pass the validation. So we had quite some back reports about that before the 15.3 um, release, but I would say that that's not a problem anymore. Anyway, we introduce, after people complain, we introduce an option to skip this kind of validation. But this validation is, a, let's say, a formal validation. We are not checking the semantics of the profile or something like that. So we introduce a new command, which is called check profile, and it's quite um, useful. Basically, what we do with check profile is we try to do the same process that Autojust does when it uh, starts the, the installation process. It checks the, um, the syntax validation. It is going to, to load rules and classes. And demand is able to run ERB and pre-scripts. So, um, and it's going also to import, to read the profile, and generate a new one after the profile has been processed. That's something when you are working with, or, or we were working with rules and classes and pre-scripts, many times you need to, to make a, a, a test in, in the system you want to install on a virtual machine or whatever. You needed to boot out a just get the profile and so on. But then now you can do every, all those, all that stuff from your whole system without having to, to start an auto just installation and check how it looks, if it works, if it doesn't. So if you are checking or if you are playing around with ERB rules or pre-scripts, I think it's a pretty convenient feature. For instance, uh, the first example is basically just uh, check the profile and everything is, is kind of okay and generate a new one so you can check if there is some difference after auto just processes the profile. You can play around with rules and classes. The second example, if you use an URL with no with a slash at the end, the rules and classes mechanisms comes into play. And you can also use run, run pre-scripts and ERB. This feature should be enabled on demand because if you are like me, you can end up destroying your system. So it's better to just uh, I, I enable that on demand so the check profile command is, is safe. It's not going to, to, to break anything. And I would say that's all. I, I, to be honest, I was unable to start the, the, the watch, so I don't know. Yeah, five, 15 min uh, 25 minutes more or less. So uh, if you have any question or something like that, yes, you can ask, or I will be around for the rest of the conference. Just approach me and, and we can talk about this. Thanks a lot. <laughs>